Hi, fellow science teachers. Are your students struggling with analyzing graphs and diagrams and tables and then using that information to draw conclusions and write their scientific explanation using the claim evidence reasoning format like mine are? We know what an important skill this is, and it's really important for their whole entire science careers in middle school and high school. We also know how important it is to practice this skill more than one time and to see it over and over again and practice it over and over again. But it's challenging to find actual practice problems that are student friendly, that have reading passages and have a diagram, graph or table to use to help the students practice this skill that they really need. So what I've done is I've created my own practice problems and I have two of them here that I want to share with you. And they include passages, there's diagrams, there's graphs for the students to analyze and interpret. And they're gonna go through and look at them and um, answer the question in the claim evidence reasoning format. They're perfect for helping your students get started writing those claim evidence reasonings along with giving you those practice problems i want to show you how i actually have my students practice doing the analyzing and the claim evidence reasoning at least once a week going through the whole entire process and really practicing it over and over again all year long now last year i decided i was going to spend one day a week doing a practice problem. So usually it was a Friday, we would go through one practice problem start to finish, we would look at the question, we would go for the reading, we would analyze the information in the diagram or the graph, we would then look at our notes that we've written down, our graphic organizers, and then we would answer the question with the claim, support it with the evidence, write the reasoning, and put it all together in one paragraph. And although my students were doing really well and getting better, and I could see the improvement I was they were making what I did at the end of the year instead of spending one day I decided to break it up so that they would do a little bit each day so they had one practice problem still for the week but instead of spending a whole day on it we would do a little bit each day spending about five minutes a day and that was a game changer because they didn't get fatigued in going through that practice problem so that's the strategy I'm going to talk to you about so on Monday, you'll hand out the uh, graphic organizer for them to write on, and then you'll have out the template for them to write their claim evidence reasoning that's broken up into the three different parts. You'll also hand them the practice problem. Now what I like to do is put them into one of those clear sleeves and put that on the desk so that way I can use the same practice problem all day long, all week long, and it stays nice. Well, that's the hope, right? So on Monday, you're gonna give them that, and their job on Monday is to go through and identify the question, and then go through the reading and pull out the main information from the reading, and that's it. You, there is a guided presentation that will take them through it, so you can just put that information on the board while you're taking care of attendance. Maybe you're passing out the homework, maybe you're collecting homework, you're doing the little business side of teaching that has to happen in the first few minutes, while the students are just going through the practice problem, identifying the question, and then pulling information from the passage. Then on Tuesday, you're gonna spend that time just looking at the information on the images. So they're analyzing diagrams, they're interpreting graphs, they're looking at the data tables. And again, you're putting the presentation up that's gonna guide them through how to analyze the graphs, how to look at the titles, the labels of the X and Y axis, how to record the important information, the important numbers that are, the graph is showing, like what may be the starting um, number and the ending number, and you're taking them through that process and all they're doing is looking at the information, looking for patterns, looking for trends, looking to see if things are increasing or decreasing, who's related to what. So that's day two, the Tuesday. On Wednesday, it start, it's time to start putting it together into the actual template for the claim evidence reasoning. So they're gonna look at the information that they had written down the last two days, 
they're going to look at the question and they're going to use their sentence frames, uh, which are supporting their language, to go ahead and answer that claim or answer the sentence using the claim. And then they're going to write down one or two evidence sentences to support the claim. So on Wednesday, it's just writing the claim and writing one or two evidence sentences. On Thursday, you'll have them do the reasoning part of it. So they'll do the reasoning sentences that explain, um, that explain the, the evidences. They're explaining them a little more and they're explaining how those evidences are supporting the claim. You'll then have them get out this self check list. It's a little check off boxes that allows them to then go through each part, make sure that they have the key information. Does the claim have the keywords from the question? Because that's where my students were struggling on. Sometimes they would write the word it. I'm like, what does it mean? If the question's not there, we don't know. You have to stand alone. So again, does it have the keywords from the question? Does the evidence include numbers? If there's a graph or data table, then there should be numbers in your evidence sentences. Does it say where the evidence comes from? Does it state the diagram's title, the graph's title? Then in the reasoning, are you really supporting it? Does your reasoning explain the evidence and does it explain how it supports that claim? So they're going through that whole entire checkoff list. Now we're at Friday and all they had to do was put it all together into one paragraph. And what I like to do, since they've been writing all week long on their worksheets, I like to have them type their last paragraph where they put it all together. We use Google Classroom. They type it all up, makes it easier for me to grade. I can quickly go through and grade a whole bunch of the claim evidence reasoning paragraphs because again, we've been talking about and discussing it the whole entire week. I can easily see if they got it or not, and then we move on. So really quickly, you're gonna be doing it um, a little bit each time. It takes in the very beginning, since again, this is a new skill probably for the students, they're not used to this, it probably takes five or 10 minutes of the class time in the beginning to go through each one of those parts. By the time you start moving through it, maybe you're on the fifth or sixth um, practice problem, now they're getting the hang of it because they're doing the same thing. Every Monday they know it's coming, every Tuesday they know it's coming, every Wednesday they know it's coming. So now it's only gonna take three to five minutes, maybe seven depending on how long those um, graphs are and how difficult those are to read but three to five minutes and you've got it done. Three to five minutes every single day, you're doing one practice problem a week and that's going to reinforce for the students how to do it. They're not gonna lose the skill because they're constantly using it every single day. And just like in the game of basketball, right? If you, are, you wanna get better at making your free throws, you need to practice doing free throws every single day, a few minutes every single day to get better. So that's what you're gonna be doing with these. Now, like I talked in the beginning, finding good practice problems, right, that are student friendly is difficult. And if you have a textbook company, that company might have given you a few practice problems, but they're probably not enough to take you through the whole entire year. So for the last two years, I've been creating my own practice problems and I created 36 practice problems where there is a reading passage, there's a diagram, a graph, a table, and that is designed to help the students continuously practice once a week on it. Along with that, I also have my top selling forensic activity introduction to CER CSI investigation where the students are private investigators and they have to solve the case of Sir Edward Berkshire III. They have to go through the police incident reports. They have to look at the um, profile of the different suspects and the victim. They have to go into the forensics information with the, the DNA analysis, the blood analysis, the fingerprints, the autopsy report, they have to look at the chemical analysis and they're gonna put it all together and then solve the case and state what actually happened to Sir Edward Berkshire III using the claim evidence reasoning format. After they do the forensics activity, I've created four new practice problems and with them are sentence choices. 
just like they would see on a state test where on the state test, I'll have a diagram and I'll have a question and it will ask them, you know, which claim best answers the question or which two evidences best support the claim. So that's what they're going to be getting. They are going to have um, the practice problem. We're going to go through the whole thing like the other ones. But instead of writing the claim, they're going to have four sentences to choose from. They're going to have to choose which claim sentence best answers the question. But most importantly, they have to justify their answer by explaining why the other three are not as good of a choice. They will then do the same thing for the evidence. They will go through all the evidences, the eight evidence choices. They'll choose two that best support the claim. Then they have to justify it and explain why the other six are not as good of a choice. And then they do the same thing for the reasoning. So it's not just about just randomly choosing the answers. They have to choose the sentences, but explain why the others aren't as good. And that explanation is going to help them develop what actually has to go into a good claim evidence reasoning paragraph because now they know what not to do when they're writing their evidence sentences and what to do and put in those sentences. So all of that. So that's 36 practice problems plus the forensics activity plus the introduction with the sentence choices all that together is enough to take you through a whole entire year of practicing claim evidence reasoning paragraphs once a week. I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know if you would like the practice problems and have a wonderful day.